each one of these is a flat. So if it says, you know, 14 flats, that's every time you turn this. And it be, can be kind of a pain, you'll see when we go to put them on the bike, because you have to be very intentional at watching what you have going on. I like to count turns. So I like to think like three turns or three and a half turns, and then I'll do a paint mark on here, and that'll help me make sure that I've made one full revolution versus just counting flats. Does that make sense? So if you have a set of instructions that only gives you flats, what I'm going to do right here on the lathe is pretty cool to know exactly how many turns and flats are going to equal each other. As I set this up, you'll see I'll use a dial indicator in the lathe just because it's so steady. And you really want to make sure that you're parallel with each other. All right, I made a reference mark on here and I went ahead and grabbed a lifter. What we're doing is we're setting this to where the, the push rod is gonna sit in the middle of this distance. That's what we're doing when we're doing the adjusting. What we know about these lifters, from here, where that just touches, and it's a little bit below the top surface there, to its full travel length, this isn't per scale, it's 200 thousandths of an inch on average. What we're trying to do uh, doing the adjustable push rod is, do you remember from class how there's a piston in here? Mm -hmm. yep. We're trying to put that piston right in the middle. So that means that when the bike starts up and it has to push the oil in here to pressurize it to have that zero lash, the whole point of that hydraulic lifter, we don't want it to be sitting right towards the edge and maxed out. And we wouldn't want it all the way at the bottom to where it has all this travel here. We want that thing to be able to float on either side of that. So that way as the engine gets hot, we won't have a tight valve that hangs up and as the engine is colder it's not going to be so crazy loose that it doesn't have a way to tighten up to begin with. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to push that piston in the middle by the number of turns. Well, that's what we're going to do now. We're at zero and I'm going to go ahead and prove what one revolution will do on this. Okay. We're at roughly 20 to about 23 thousandths for one revolution, okay? We could count the flats. One, two, three, four, five, six flats. What I'm trying to prove here is I want to look at the direction and we know that six flats is one turn and it was 23 thousandths. Per the instructions with these push rods, it was two and a half turns. So we're going to go ahead, we got one. Let's go ahead and two. And then I'll flip that around to the back side there. So we are 80, about 82 thousandths. And we said that 100 is a, an estimate or a rough number that there's a lot of engine builders using that. It wouldn't surprise me if you found like a, uh, you know, a, a racer that's saying, I really want to put that dead set in the middle. And they would go ahead and just do this and figure out then, look at that, at three turns, this is 100 and just under 105 thousandths at three turns. Good question was is what do you mean or what's the starting point? You'll feel a little bit of a cushion in there, okay? This is zero. So it's two and a half turns from wherever zero is. Mm -hmm. So you might on one valve, it might take you three, four, five, six, eight turns to get it to where it's zero, but it's from that. Okay. And this is all set on top dead center compression of that cylinder. You have to be in the right, in the correct cylinder, top dead center compression. I'm going to go ahead here and demonstrate that two and a half turn adjustment here. You'll see I'm holding the bottom there, that 5 sixteenths, and turn the top counterclockwise with a half inch. And then now, I need two half inches. Turn here. Tight. They do not give a torque spec on that, okay? So, tight. Lock the lock nut against the adjuster. I'm going to duplicate the process on the, on this one. And then it says, per the instructions, it says wait like 10 minutes. What I want to be able to do, which I, see, I can't rotate this right now because why? What just happened? I opened what? So, I pushed that down and the lifter said, no, I got some oil in here. And it locked up, and so my rod, as I lengthened it, opened the valve spring, opened the valve. So that means, remember the valve's at top dead center right now? So that means that valve was being aimed towards that cutout or that relief. 
I need to do both of these, and you do not rotate the engine till I can twirl these. They say about 10 minutes is what it says in the instructions. You guys know from class, sometimes they take 20 minutes. I can't switch to this cylinder till these are called what is bled down, and I can rotate them literally by hand. Once I can rotate those, I move it around, duplicate the process over here, turn the wheel over with it in top gear, watch the intake one open and close, flip over to the piston. When the piston gets to top dead center, we know that's compression stroke, adjust those, wait the 10 minutes. Before I put my covers fully on, I have to be able to rotate these front ones by hand, and we call that lead the lifter.